So uh, we're going to write reusable JavaScript with functions. So we're going to do functions today uh, with JavaScript. So uh, I want you guys to open up a JS fiddle. And I'll do that too. Actually, for me, I'm going to open up. God, what is it called? Uh, just fiddle alternatives. That's what happens when I don't get enough sleep. Code pen. There we go. So you guys are going to use uh, JS Fiddle because you guys are going to be collaborating with one another. And I'm going to be using CodePen because it's a better interface. Why does nothing ever work on here? Okay, so just like uh, JS Fiddle, CodePen works by having your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all in one place, and then the output on the bottom. So with your JS Fiddles, I want you guys to, uh, one of you guys is going to host, and the other person is going to um, be invited by the host to that JS Fiddle, so you guys are going to work on the same JS Fiddle together. Is there any way we can turn off like half the lights? Or you have to turn off all the lights? Let's see. Let's just turn off half the lights this time. Yeah. See if that works. Can you guys see that? All right. Thank you. All right, so right now I'm going to start off with functions. So functions have uh, two different purposes. One, you can use a function either to uh, wrap code around. Uh, so let's say that you have a bunch of code that you want to execute. A function can just be a wrapper. Uh, and what that means is you use it um, whenever you want to execute a bunch of code, you just call that function. So let's do an example of a wrapper type function. So you have function, uh, let's put wrapper. I'm going to put, uh, and this function is not going to have any parameters. So let's just say that I, I wanted to do a bunch of different stuff. So, hey, wait, what? Good God, what is happening? No, I don't want auto save. Okay. So now we want, you know, maybe another a console.log. 
I'm printing stuff out. And maybe another alert that says, man, I could use a beer. Okay. So we have all uh, three of these. And let's just say that you always wanted these to run anytime someone called the function wrapper. So you wanted these to run anytime you call it all in one code block. Well, that's how a wrapper function works. Uh, and I just call it wrapper. We can call it anything we want. I can just call this run this. And so if I call run this, now this function will run. So if I hit save, now if I hit run, so I'm going to just execute. It's going to say, hey, and then it's going to say, man, I could use a beer. And you're probably wondering, where's this console.log? Well, we have a console here on the bottom. So it says, I'm printing stuff out. So the console shows that invisibly in the console area. Um, and the alerts are going to show up as pop-ups. So the uh, anatomy of a function is that you start off with the keyword function, and then you can uh, give it a name. So this is a named function. So the name of this function is run this. And then there's uh, parentheses. These could have things in them. Um, in the case of us running a wrapper type function where we're just trying to execute code anytime we call it, so we're, we're not putting any parameters in here. So we're always just going to have empty ones whenever we want to use a wrapper function. Now let's see what they want us to do. So yeah, a reusable uh, function uh, is the same thing as what I call a wrapper function, meaning that let's say that you just want to call that function over and over and over. It will just run the same code over and over and over. So instead of you having to call all of this code over and over and over each time you wanted to run it, you then just call this wrapper function, which we named run this. Now, do you guys have any questions about the anatomy of the function so far or how the, uh, how the function works? So far, this is a function definition. A function definition is how you define the function, how the function is created. The function definition is not going to run on its own. A function needs to be called. So this is me calling the function over here. Again, this is being recorded, so you guys are going to be able to go back on the lecture notes. Um, but this is the function uh, definition of the function declaration. And this is the function call. So when you want to run the function, you just use this right here. So whatever this is, is going to be the name of the function followed by the parentheses. All right, so that's the reusable function. So now we can also pass values to functions with arguments. And this is called an input output function. So an input output function means that you give the function an input and it will return an output. So now let's do a different type of function. So just comment that out. And now we're going to have add numbers. So we're going to create a function that can add numbers. So I'm going to do num1, num2, do something wrong? No, OK. OK, so these are parameters. They're essentially just placeholders. OK, so now you have a function that has something inside those parentheses that we went over before, right? So before we had empty parentheses, there's nothing inside. Now there's parameters. These parameters are set inside the function declaration, meaning that you're saying, hey, I want these different parameters inside. And whatever value I pass this function is going to replace these different parameters. So let's use an example. If I use add numbers, before I would just do this, right? If it was a wrapper function. But now I can pass it values. So I can actually still do this. JavaScript allows me to do this. This will still run, just nothing will happen. It won't run into an error. Other languages, they tend to be more strict. They're like, no, like Java, it'll be like, no, wait, you need to pass me something because you said there's two parameters, and I need you to pass me two values to replace those parameters, and I'm freaking the hell out here, and I have no idea what's going on in my, wife, my, my life. My wife is leaving me. There's a lot of things going on. I can't have you do this to me right now. By the way, I'm not married, and I don't have a wife. This is just an example that I came up with in my head. Um, so it essentially freaks you out, right? It, it, it normally freaks out, but in JavaScript, it doesn't freak out. And this is like very unique, I think, to JavaScript and a few other languages where you can get away with not passing any values to predefined parameters. So normally, you'd have to do something like this in all programming languages. You have to pass it like something like, OK. So Jackie, you love math. 
55 and 72. What's going to be my uh, my result of the function? What is it going to uh, return? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What? Let's find out. Let's run this. And 127. So Jackie gets five invisible points. Excellent. So um, whatever it gets passed, it will add those two numbers together because that's what I asked it to do. This function is going to take any two parameters it gives you and add those two numbers together. Now, we learned about string concatenation as well, right? You can also use this as a string concatenator. So if I was to do, shoot, uh, let's do meow. Kitty. Do you think that would work? Why or why not? Oh, you guys can't see any of that? Can you guys see now? Enhance. Yeah, we might need to close the lights. Can you guys see now? All right. Let's just close all of this. So what do you think will happen? Will I get an error? Why would I get an error? Right, but if I passed in a, a string here and a string here, and that would give me a string here and a string here, what would this plus operator do between those two strings? It would com concatenate them, right? So this would actually create meow, I'm a kitty. Right, these num, these these words don't mean anything. These are just, uh, parameters or placeholders. They could be like, you know, booger, so I have booger, and it would run exactly the same. So if I run meow my kitty, meow my kitty. That's pretty cool though, right? So you can actually use that, that plus operator to do two different things. So that's creating an input output function where you pass it some values and it'll output some, uh, some stuff. So I think these are especially, I think Swayzin, David, and uh, Jackie are the most interested in this kind of stuff. I don't know, Diana, Jasmine, Steve, you guys, do you guys care about this kind of stuff too? As much? Yeah, you can be honest. Mas o menos? As they say in the land of Mexico. Neutral, okay. Muscle minus. All right. So now that we have functions covered, um, two different uh, types of functions, now we're going to cover global scope and functions. So they have this crazy example. I'm going to change this example, actually. I'm just going to have a function that says... Let me create it here first. So if I run Gato right now, what do you guys think would get outputted? To a console. Let's see. Meow. Excellent. What if I did... this. Oh, 
Mm, there's, you're saying that this wouldn't work because you're not defining what sound is, right? So how does Gato know? Well, let's find out. Hmm, why does that work? We didn't define sound inside here, but yet it still works. This is called scope. So when, you, when we define this variable sound outside here, it actually has a global scope because we defined it outside of a function. We defined it, we defined it in the file itself where because it's here, it has a global scope. Anywhere else in the file, we could use this sound variable. Now, if we defined var sound equals Let's see what happens now. Nothing appears. Why is that? It's inside the function. So this variable sound is being defined inside the function. So whatever you define inside of a function is local only to that function and does not exist outside of that function. So if you try to say, you know, sound, it's going to be like, what the hell is sound? I have no idea what that is. That doesn't make any sense to me. But if you used it within the function, then it'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going to look for everything that's in this function and I only exist inside of here. So the data that the function has is only defined by what you give it. So if the function is passed parameters that have the word sound in it, and yeah, it can use that. But a function is local. Whenever you're, you're trying to use any variables inside of a function, it's local just to that function. If you have a global variable, so this is a global variable, then the sound will make poo, right? So this sound will run because it only recognizes whatever's in the global scope. In here, if we run console.log and put sound, we're actually going to get quack and poo because this is going to run first because this got called first and then this got called even though they both have the same exact variable because this variable refers to the one outside here. This is the difference between local scope and global scope. So local scope just means a variable defined inside of a function. Global is outside of a function. That's it. All that confusion is just if you have a variable inside of a function, it's local to just that function. If you have a variable outside of a function, it's global. Is everyone with me so far? Ish? All right. So I'm going to use this example for both global and local. So now with that, I want you guys to have a creepy discussion. So explain the concepts we just went over in turns to your partner. OK, so we'll do that for about five minutes. And uh, someone please get the lights.
Mm-hmm. Concatenate, concatenate, yeah. Can you do a number and So, um, this is a good question. Um, Steve was asking, can you concatenate a number and a word? What happens actually is when you take a string and a numer, uh, a numerator, sorry, not a numerator, uh, and a number, uh, it actually parses that as meaning you want to combine two strings together. So let's try that out. Yeah, so it, it, it can actually only combine two of the same type, of the same data type. But let's see what happens if I do console.log, and let's just try that out. So a word plus a number, and let's see what comes out. A word seven. So notice it actually takes this number and it converts it into a string and just concatenates it as a string. Oh, shoot, sorry, my bad. You didn't see my invisible typing? So up here, it says a word plus seven, right? So now you have a string and then plus a number. And now if I run that, it says a word seven as one string. That's because JavaScript actually converts this into a string and then concatenates those two strings together. So you generally don't want to do this. You always want to just say one data type uh, either adding to the other data type or concatenating to that data type. So two strings being concatenated together or two numbers being added together. The bomb. Okay. Let me just finish this up real quick. Assign it the return value. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do one more. Let's do if statements, yeah, okay.
Okay. So I'm gonna have one of you guys uh, explain in each group. Let's see. So, Jackie, um, can you explain in your own words what a reusable JavaScript uh, with function is? So, what a reusable function is, or a wrapper function is? It's okay. Maybe we could practice. Well, you can use a function like that, but that's not the definition of a reusable function. You can't? Okay, so a reusable function or a wrapper function um, is essentially just a way to use a function um, to make whatever code you want repeated over and over and over by just calling the name of the function. So let's say that you have a bunch of code. You have like 10 different lines of JavaScript, or you have 30 or 50 or billion. And instead of, and let's say that you want to use this code over and over and over. You just want to call it over and over and over. In gaming, let's say that it's an attack, right? You want to do this attack, and this destroys this building, or this attack, and it damages this person for this amount of health. Instead of running through all the commands that would require this attack to happen, you then just call the function, which would then, perf which would just be a wrapper around it. And then it'll execute all of that. You just define it once and just call it as many times as you want to use it. So that's a reusable function. So, uh, Stephen, what about uh, passing values to functions with arguments? Can you try and explain that in your own words? What's that? Or another word is uh, input output functions. Can you explain how they work? No, that doesn't have anything to do with the function itself. That so that was just an example I used. Okay. Yeah, um, you can actually use the parameters for whatever you want. Two you can, well, not two functions. You can. Yes, you can combine two different. Uh, you can combine data types together. Uh, you can subtract from each other and all that stuff. There's a lot of different things, and I didn't mention this as an example yet, but um, in a function, you can actually do whatever you want with those parameters. You can actually just um, make them concatenate with each other. You can not actually use them. There's a lot of things. Like, let's say that you create a complicated function that takes whatever you pass it, the values that you pass it. The values that you pass that replace those placeholders, those placeholders are called parameters, right? So up here, these two up here, right? And these two, which are the same. They're parameters. These are placeholders. So whatever you pass it, it's going to replace those. So you can actually make a whole story with a function because you can just pass this a bunch of string, uh, a bunch of strings, and just say like a, b, c, blah, blah, blah. And when you call the function, you can just say like you know you create a Mad Libs kind of uh, function where it can then you know create a whole story based on that. You can do whatever you want with these parameters, or you can not use any of those parameters as all uh, as well with JavaScript. Hmm. If you want to call a specific word, I mean, you could do that. Yeah, you can use it for indexing in a very complicated way. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's it can be for a wide variety of things. Functions are like at the core of how like a lot of things work. Generally, functions like are used in a lot of uh, like if you want to think about it in gaming, like um, let's say you create an attack method or an attack function, right? and you pass it values of how much damage this attack will do, or who you want this to attack. These are the values that will replace these parameters, right? And then it will, it will perform those actions. So it's actually really cool. You can do a lot of things with them. Um, OK, so how about global scope and local scope and functions? So David, do you mind explaining the difference between global scope, uh, a variable with global scope, and a variable that's uh, local scope? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It has to be inside, yeah. Exactly. Perfect. So um, what David said was that the var sound equals poo is global and var sound equals quack is uh, local. And the only difference between local and global is that local means that it's defined within a function. Global means that it's defined outside of a function. So if I call the sound variable, it's referring to the global variable. If I call the function, and if the function is outputting this in any way, then that will get outputted as well because we're calling the function itself. Excellent. OK. Any questions? So local has priority, right? L local has priority if you call the local function. It, 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 they won't override the other, because the global doesn't even know that the local one exists. And the more you use it, the, the easier it'll get. OK, so now let's go to returning a value from a function with the return keyword. So we have this return keyword. So by the way, I'm shamelessly using all these examples from free code camp rather than like making my own. Sometimes I'll modify it and make my own, um, like the poo and stuff like that. That's, that's my own, obviously. Oh, you have to refresh. Yeah, I'm like doing these on the fly. True, and then var, other val. OK. So the first one is returning a value from a function with the return keyword. So return keyword means that um, whatever gets evaluated, give that back to me. Return. Return it back to me. Now you're probably wondering, well, what the fuck? What, what is that? I can't say the bad word because I'm being recorded. But um, what does that mean, right? What does return mean? So let's, let's find out what return means. Let's try and create a uh, function with return. So we have function. Uh, returning function and uh, you wanted to see something different that could happen with that right so let's do var1 plus Space. Var two. So in this case, we're not just concatenating these two together. We're actually putting something else in between. Let's clear this. Um. So let's see what happens if I just type in returning function and I pass it two strings. And maybe let's change this. Uh, can somebody give me like a good sentence to use between two words? Or a string to use between two words? Well, uh, this could be whatever you want it to mean, okay? So if you guys are perverted, then it'll be perverted. If you guys are adjusted, well-balanced well, well -balanced human beings, then it, it could be as simple as um, mark And this can mean so many different things, by the way. Uh, it can refer to ice cream, uh, sermons, uh, prayer, etc. So I'm going to go with that. You guys are horrible. Okay, so let's see what happens if I do that. And maybe I shouldn't use church. How about this? Uh, in the park. So nothing's happening. If I run that, Mm. 
No, we have. This is when we when we put that these are being defined. This is where we define them. These are parameters that get defined right here. They're redefined as bar one, bar two. Mm -hmm. So it should come out saying var one joins with bar two. Yeah. So mark. So this is working right actually. Mark. So mark will replace var one. Park will replace var two. So mark enjoys it in the park. So what's going on? Well, what actually is happening is we're not saving it to anything. We're not outputting it anywhere. We're not we're not like you know logging it anywhere. Um, so what I want to do is actually first save my return value into a variable. So I'm just going to put ret, and then I'm going to do a console.log of ret. Let's see what happens now. Mark enjoys it in the park. Okay, so. What happened was this return value gets stored in the function. But we, if we don't have something uh, stored in the function, then it's going to get lost. So you want to store it into a variable, right? So whenever you have something that gets returned, you generally want to store that value into a variable. So returning function mark park is going to return mark enjoys it in the park. We then save that into RET. We could also do something like this. If we didn't want to save it and we just wanted to use it once, Mark enjoys it in the park. Because that returns this value, and then that value then gets logged onto console. OK? So you guys have any questions about that, about how the return value works? Another caveat about the return value, sorry, the return uh, keyword is if you put any code after the return keyword, it won't run. I'll show you. So why isn't run being outputted? Well, it's actually because what return does, it's saying, just give me this. Don't give me, I don't care about anything else after this. You can have a bunch of code that gets outputted before. So if we put this before, Now it's run, and then Mark enjoys it in the park. But as soon as you hit return, it's assuming you're done with the function, and uh, you just want to return whatever values after that. So it will just give you back whatever's here in this one line. Anything after it won't get returned and won't run. OK? OK. Um, so now let's do an assignment with a return value. Okay. So these are directly from the free code camp modules, by the way. So uh, you guys do these with me, and then hopefully uh, when you go into the free code camp module, it becomes a lot easier. So over here, they have an example where there's a variable called changed equals 0. Okay. Then the function that we create is called change. And then we have a, a parameter called num. Then it says return num plus 5 divided by 3. And then it says changed equals calling this change 10. So let's just rename this different. OK. So now this looks a lot different, right? Um, so in the beginning, this change variable is equal to what? Zero. Now we have a function that takes in a num. And what happens is, whatever you pass it, it'll add 5 to it, and it'll divide by 3. Now that we're saving into a variable called changed, which is what we did earlier, right? We saved it into a variable. So um, math people, so sways in. What do you think will be uh, returned? And let me let me console log this also. Changed. What do you think will appear in the console? Okay, so let's go through the steps. So change is equal to zero, right? So we're just setting the variable changed. We're not even using it yet. We have a, a function called different. 
and that takes a num. Now, whatever num, whatever variable you pass it, whatever value you pass that variable, called an argument, um, to replace that placeholder, which is a parameter, it's then going to add 5 to it and divide it by 3. So if we're calling this function called different, and it gets sent a value of what? 10. So now this is 10. This is 10. So what's happening here? What's going to be returned here? Mm -hmm. Which is? 5. Okay. So then what gets saved into change? 5. Now, if we do console.log of change, then it should be 5. There you go. And Bob's your uncle. All right, understanding Boolean values. This is actually the easiest. These are Boolean values. Oh, actually, let me just write them down. True, false. These are Boolean values. That's another data type. So we've gone over three different data types so far. Sorry, uh, four. Let me make sure functions are a data type, just to be sure. Are functions a data type? JavaScript. Numbers, booleans. God, this is going slow. Arrays. I can't even scroll down. Um, I guess functions are a data type. Okay, so we've gone over three different types of data types. Uh, so we've gone over numbers, strings, and we've gone over booleans. So boolean is literally just true or false. Those are actual values, true or false. Everyone understand what a true false means? If something is true, it's true. If something is false, it's false. Okay. Um, Our next one is actually really important, uh, using conditional logic. So let's create a function that has a if-else statement. So we're going to use these if-else statements. And if-else statements are used all throughout programming. And you can do tons of stuff with if-else statements. So I'm going to call this iffy. And I'm going to give this a val. And now let's create a function that's going to test to see if someone is over 18. So if val, so if val is greater than or equal to 18, so val stands for val, uh, value, not Valerie, just FYI. Um, return, or let's do console.log. Welcome to the military. Else? Actually, do I need parentheses? I think. Yeah, I don't. Come back when you're old, kid. All right, so let's say that you have uh, a function called iffy, and you're testing to see um, if someone's old enough to get in to the military. You're a military recruiter, and they've, uh, they've submitted their forms. Now, you're going to check to see if they're 18 or older. So let's say that you know there's this, form run or this validation of, uh, function running in the background, and it's just going to check for you. So if someone has a value of 17, it's going to output, come back when you're older, kid. However, if you have something that says, you know, 18, 
Welcome to the military. So conditional statements are really powerful because they allow you to check to see if different conditions are met. And what I did was I said, if this condition is true, so this, this condition right here is going to output into a Boolean value. If it's true, then make this code happen. So you can put a bunch of code in here. That'll make all this code happen, right? Else, that means otherwise, if this is false, then make any of this code happen. And that's what an if-else statement is. And we just put that into a function, okay? So I want you guys to take five minutes. I want you guys to, well, actually, let's do seven minutes this time. And you guys are going to explain it to each other. All right. Take care of each other. You guys are like a family. A very temporary family, but still a family.
ต้องการโอเค so let me see where is this one here we go Jasmine can you please explain to me how to return a value from a function with return <laughs> that fast I would rather you try and explain it to me. What does a return do? Returns to what? No, not to the original state. What What does return do, in a sense, in your own words, if you can try and explain it? Okay, so if you guys have questions, if you guys don't understand the concepts, again, what are you supposed to do? There's a guy here who knows something about programming. He's up here most of the time. What do you guys do? Ask. Yes, you ask me. And you ask me to review it, and then I can go over it again. So um, a return will basically return whatever you give it to, uh, whatever values you give it, back to the function itself. Now, if you want to save that value for later, You can then save that returned value into a variable. So again, um, a return is just saying, "Give me back whatever uh, whatever computation comes after me, or whatever programming you're doing in this line, and I'm going to give you give it back to you in this function." Now, if you if you store that into a variable, then you can then use that value later. Uh, for instance, let's say that. Um, You have a function that stores uh, the age of someone. Then later on, we want to use that value, and then we use it to check other things too. So we definitely want to save that. So that's how we use the return value. And return does. Uh, if we have any coding after return, will it get outputted, or will it run? No. Return means that it's. That's the end of the function. You don't want any more code to run. So whenever you run a return, it's like, okay, I'm doing the return, and now just return these values. Anything after it won't run. What about before the return? Yes, anything before the return will still run, but after the return, it won't run. So in, in, your, uh, in your example here, the chain would be the person put in 10. Uh, that's a different example, but yeah. So um, the return um, would be five, right. right? That would be the return value. But normally, it'd be like zero plus five, five three. Uh, normally, it would be nothing because if you called it without a yeah. So I mean, well, it would it would just run into an error. It would just be like, okay, let let let's see what happens if you try to run this without anything. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Perfect. So the next one is assignment with the return value, right? So that's the one Steve was just going over. So assignment just means putting that into a variable. So Diana, can you explain what assignment uh, in your own words? <laughs> okay. Um. So. I think you're trying to explain it in your own words, and that's okay. But uh, assignment, uh, when I'm referring to assignment, um, you're actually doing good. You're 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 actually explaining the concept right. Uh, but assignment, when I'm referring to assignment, is um, 
assigning the value to a variable. So you're passing in the number 10 to the function called change, okay? And then? The 10 replaces num. Okay. So in this case, the 10 replaces num right here. So then num plus 5 would be instead what? It would be, well, well yeah, but what is num? Num would be 10 in this case, right? Because we're saying we're calling this function, and we're saying, okay, now replace 10 with num. Or sorry, replace num with 10. So then now this is 10 plus 5. That's 15, then what? Okay, and then we're returning that back to this function, right? So we're returning it back to change. So that value is saved inside change, but we're not really saving it until we assign it to a variable, which we are here. So the value, what gets returned here? Five, right? So this is five. Now where does it get stored? And changed, exactly. So now we're storing it inside change. That's what we're doing. We're saying first we're, we want to call this function 10. With the, Sorry, we're calling this function called change. We're passing in argument of 10. 10 is replacing this parameter called num. Then num goes through, okay, 10 plus 5 divided by 3, that's 5. Now what are we doing? We're turning it. Okay, so it goes back to this function. And now we want to store it in a variable, so we go to changed. So that's a series of events we're going through. So... Jasmine, could you explain that to me now? It's okay, why don't you try? So what's happening with change and uh, this 10 number that we have inside of it? Nothing? Okay, so what's the first step? We have a function call. What's the name of the function? What's the name of this function right here? Hmm? Argue? So we're just looking at this function right over here. So, okay. What's the name of the function in here? Okay, so we have a function declaration, right? We're defining a function in here. When we define this function, what did we name it? I think you're not even reading it, actually. <laughs> no, I want you to explain it because I want you to learn this. I'm not picking on you just to like pick on you. I'm picking on you because I want you to learn this. There's no consequences in here. If you don't learn it, then you don't you don't like you know get fired or anything. There's literally no consequences. So you can take your time. We can learn this together. So the function is named change because it has this word change in front of it, right? That's how we name functions. So we use this keyword called function. Then we use this word change, that's what we named our function. If I change this to banana, what's the name of my function?
If I change the name of my function to banana, what's the name of my banana? Uh, what's the name of my function? Yeah, it's banana. Yeah, that's. It. I'm just talking to you right now, Jasmine, because I want you to get this. It was scary when you said that you have no clue. So I want you to actually have some clue about what's happening here. So now we have a function, and the name of it is banana, right? Are we good? Okay. Now, what's this parameter over here? This parameter is a placeholder called num. Now, num is a placeholder that we can pass values to to replace this placeholder. Now, I created a function where I, well, I didn't actually create it, free code camp did. And they said that anytime you have a num, it'll add five to it and divide it by three. So over here, we have this function that we're calling called banana, right? So we're using this function now. Over here, we define this function. So we have this function named banana and that we defined, and we passed it a value of what? What is this value over here? Jasmine? 10, yes, 10. So we're passing banana a value of 10. So now what's going to happen to this value of 10? What is it going to become at the end of this programming, at the end of this statement? So if 10 replaces num, what happens at the end of this statement? So this 10 right here is replacing this num, which means that this is now 10 and this is now 10. So what happens here? What is 10 plus 5 divided by 3? Yeah. So then that gets returned because of this keyword called return. So now that value of 5 gets returned back to this function when we called it. But we want to then save that value into a variable called what? Well, we saved it. Well, right now it's stored inside banana because banana is the function. But we're storing it inside of a variable. What's the name of the variable we're storing it into? Yeah, exactly. So now we stored this value inside changed. So change now contains what? Exactly. So now we have five stored inside change. So now you understand the concept because you took it step by step. So the first step was we created this function, right? For well, first, we created this variable called changed, and we gave it a value of zero. So change started off with a value of what? Well, it started off with a value of what? Uh, uh, sorry, in the very, very beginning, before we did anything. I didn't go over this yet. So when it first started off, what value was uh, change given? Zero, exactly. Now, then we uh, created a function, and we named it what? What's the name of this function? Banana. banana. Exactly. Now we have a function, and we named it banana. And then we said, okay, we're going to put a placeholder here called num. And anytime num gets passed into this function, we're going to add 5 to it and divide it by 3. And then we're going to return that value back to function. So then we called this function. We called it, we called it, that means we we're saying use it. Use this function, banana. And so when you use it, now we're saying, okay, I'm going to pass it a value of 10. So now that I pass it a value of 10, this 10 replaces this num. So now when this 10 replaces this num, what value gets passed back to me? Exactly. So now you have 5 being returned back to banana. And now what is, uh, what is that value stored into then? 
What variable does it get stored into? Exactly. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so does everyone understand that? I know it's pretty complicated stuff, and I want you guys to understand it. That's why I want you guys to like just drill it in your heads, go through the concepts, really go over it. This is really complicated stuff, but you guys will get through it. Okay. Our next one is understanding Boolean values. So this should be pretty easy. There's only two Boolean values. So, uh, Dana, what are the two Boolean values? True yes, true and false. Those are the two Boolean values, right? True and false. It's another data type. Uh, can anyone name the other two data types besides Boolean values? Numbers and strings. So far, we've gone over numbers, strings, and uh, Boolean values. What are the Boolean values? True and false. That's it. Strings, again, are just words, or sorry, any kind of character, any kind of letter, any kind of number inside of quotation marks. Numbers are numbers. They're just, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, negative numbers, all that stuff, too. Uh, use conditional logic with if statements. So conditional statements. Can anyone explain what conditional statements are to me? In their own words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it, it's basically just um, like almost like a gatekeeper, right? So it, it, that was a perfect explanation. Thank you. So you say if else. In this case, it's just if else. It's not, there's, there's a whole series of ifs that you can do. And programming, the whole of, entirety of programming can be based on this. So let's say that you have a robot. And you, you set the programming to saying, if someone pushes the button to click right, it'll move right. Else, it won't do anything. If someone pushes left, it'll go left. Otherwise, it won't do anything. If someone pushes it to go diagonally, it'll go diagonally. So you can see how, how, how if-else statements can create almost the entirety of programming. You can actually build an entire program just with if-else statements based on user input and based on what values are given, right? Especially with gaming. If someone attacks you with this sword, then you take this much damage. Else if you get attacked with this bow and arrow, then you take this much damage. If someone attacks you with a spell, you take this much damage. But if you have this buff or something where you have this shield, you don't take any damage. So this whole if-else statement, they can really help build out these programming things. OK. Good work, guys. I know this is tough stuff, but we're going to get through it. So comparison with the equality operator. So this one's not too bad. So so I'm just going to keep saying so. So before we move on, um, have you guys seen Conan O'Brien's uh, K-pop video that I show in this class? Yeah? I did? OK. I want to watch something silly. Uh, let's break it up with something silly. Oh, shoot. Jason Bourne official trailer. Did you guys already watch that? You guys want to watch that? Yeah? All right. That could be good. There's a video called How to Make VR Porn. Why would you... Wait, 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 wait. Slow motion, Matt Damon. I don't know, but it, nothing's working. Like, I'm trying to push a bunch of commands and nothing's working. Stop. Oh, you can close the lights, by the way. Thank you.
before since noted. Facial recognition got a hit. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Why would he come back now? Oh shit. There's a demonstration in front of the Greek Parliament building. I think she'll use it as cover. They tracked you. We gotta move. Sorry. God damn it. I volunteered. Because. Because. For the lie. 